I think the biggest beginner struggle on the drums is not knowing what grooves or fills to play and therefore not being able to play songs easily. Getting started is frustrating. I get it, I've been there, so let me help you today. If you're new to the drums and you're feeling overwhelmed and unable to have fun, you're in the right place. Learn these 12 simple yet powerful and compelling and musical fills that I'm teaching you today so that you can sound and feel like a real drummer, confidently nailing fills. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians that actually sound great and that others want to play with and have in their bands. And we do this by learning the core, non-glamorous, most important skills that get you the quickest results in the practice room. So to give you a sneak peek of where we're going today, yes, I could just play these 12 fills for you and say grab the notation, go practice these and be done in like five minutes. And some people want super short videos like that where I just spoon feed stuff to you. But that isn't very helpful and isn't very useful if I'm not showing you how to make sure you can play these well and then how to use them. So I want you to stick with me through the whole lesson. Your future self thanks you because I want you to thoroughly learn this stuff and I want you to master fills which means having a little bit of patience and learning everything there is to learn here. So what we're covering, first, the number one thing every drummer should practice to get better at fills. I promise you we won't spend too much time on this. It's nice and simple. It's something you can do on your pad. And if you are a total beginner, this is essential. We've got to cover that before getting into the fills. Then of course, we'll talk about the 12 easy beginner rock fills you can use right now, the fun stuff. But lastly, I'm gonna give you an exercise that tells you what fill to play and when. This is really cool and it really rounds this out because all of these fills are no good if you don't know how to use them and when to use them in music. So I wanna prepare you for that. This exercise is gonna show you exactly how. And hey, as we get rolling, I want you to grab my 25 practical rock grooves and fills free PDF guide in the description below. You may have heard me talk about it before here on the channel, but this is literally your visual aid, your, your notation guide companion to this lesson. These 12 fills are some top favorites from that guide. So go grab that so you've got the notation there in front of you to follow along with. And it also has recordings. You can click the links there in the PDF and listen to recordings of these fills. So it is your total ultimate practice aid for working on all of these. So be sure to grab that guide. We'll be talking about it some more as we go. All right, let's dive in. The number one thing every drummer should practice in order to get better it fills. We have to cover this first because if all I do is play these fills for you today and say, all right, here's the fills, go and play them, that might be okay and this would be a nice quick video and you could go on your way, but that would not necessarily be very helpful, especially if you're a beginner because there are some core things that we need to cover first. This is only going to take a few minutes. So I'd say the number one thing, this is just one thing, one thing nice and simple that you can be practicing on your practice pad or your snare, doesn't matter that's gonna really help you with fill execution. And I'll show you why. This is really cool. Because the problem is that a lot of times we jump onto the kit and we expect that we're just gonna be able to play things. Like we expect that, okay, let me figure out this fill. Okay, I should be able to nail it after a few reps. And that's possible, but if you want to get to where you're really able to just nail fills across the board and keep good time across the board and transition in and out of fills well across the board, no matter what on the kit, then there's a fundamental thing that you gotta practice first. This is what it is alternating singles on your pad, and then just one-handed eighths. So what do I mean by this? Practice sitting here and playing. Super simple, but practice doing this and then going to just right hand and then back into alternating. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, right and two and three, back to sixteenths. And one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one and two, and three. Practice doing this. So what I want you to do, set your metronome to 70 beats per minute and just play a measure of eights followed by sixteenths. Doesn't matter which you start with, you can do the sixteenths first and the eights or the eights first. But practice doing, with, doing this with your metronome because I want you to think about this. Most fills you play, especially the fills that we're playing today, simple, compelling, practical musical fills simply involve going from right hand eighth note timekeeping into sixteenth notes. Most fills were grooving along one and two and three and four and go 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 one and two. Right hand sometimes doesn't stop. Some of these fills, right hand just doesn't stop. Right hand is playing eighth notes the whole time. One and two and three. And then when we go into the fill, the left hand might be filling in the space. Well, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two. Back to right hand timekeeping. It's so fundamental and so eye-openingly simple that if you can get really good. It just with your metronome, 70 beats a minute. One and two and three and four and one e and a two e and. 
Get super solid and consistent at that, and that will directly apply to, I think, almost every fill that we're covering here, at least most of these 12 fills. This is so core, so fundamental, so important. I promise you this is gonna help, so practice this first. Be patient, make this your number one pad practice exercise you do every day. Just going from eights with the right hand into alternating, and hey, you can flip this upside down, do it left hand lead also. It might not apply directly to the kit, but let's balance things out. Let's make sure our weak hand is playing well too. And so sit here and go, one and two and three and four and a left, right, left, right, left, right, left. That way you're making your brain really focus on that left hand too. We wanna to even out our hands here, that's key. Don't skip this, this is the foundational skill. This is the non-glamorous, nitty gritty foundational skill for nailing fills. Be practicing this every day and I promise it will serve you well and help you in the long run. All right, now that we've covered that, let's get into the fun stuff. The 12 easy beginner rock fills you can use right now. So. I mentioned that guide earlier, 25 practical rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer. That is your accompanying notation PDF to today's lesson. These 12 easy beginner rock fills, I've just pulled from there. The simplest ones, the most used ones, these are the 12 favorites from that guide. So that's where these are coming from. I've got them pulled up here on my iPad. So grab that guide so that you have them in front of you too. If you wanna download the 25 grooves and fills guide, you can pause the video, download that, put it on another device, print it out, whatever you wanna do. When you have it in PDF form on your device, you can click on any of the titles and hear a recording. So as you're practicing these, not only do you have the visual of me doing it here in this lesson, but in that PDF guide, you can click on any of the titles and hear a recording. So that's super helpful, it's all super clear. I think it's gonna help you out a bunch. So here are the 12 beginner fills that are probably my most used, most played fills of all time. So simple, so compelling. I'm gonna label each of these on the screen. The notation is in the guide, so go grab that guide. I'm gonna play through these for you and then we're gonna talk about the exercise that tells you which of these fills to play and when. So we won't be done. I'm not just gonna play these for you and say good luck, go. We cover things thoroughly here. That's why these are not just five minute videos that aren't very helpful. What I wanna do is help you know how to actually use these fills. So I'm gonna show them to you here, but then I'm gonna give you a really cool exercise that tells you which fills to play and when and helps you with that musicality side of it. So definitely don't miss that. Don't skip over that.
I picked sort of a medium tempo to demonstrate most of these at, and a lot of the 4-4 fills there at the beginning before we went into the 6-8 fills were at 80 beats a minute. Now the one, the 16th note build one, that one, 80 beats a minute is pretty quick for that. And so that's one that I encourage you to start much slower. But what's cool is the PDF guide, go download it in the description. It has recommended tempos. And so you can start super slow with that one, like 55, 60 beats a minute. And that type of fill works really well very slowly too. I'm more likely to use that build fill in like a 70 beats per minute song or even slower than that because it really helps to ramp things up. It's such a great, big, energetic sort of fill. And then those six, eight fills, those can work at so many different tempos. But as you can see, we're just scratching the surface here of great, simple fills. And so these are 12 favorites that you can grab onto, start practicing right now, but grab that guide because there's a bunch more and there's recordings in there, notation, and little descriptions that help you know when and how to use these fills. Now, speaking of at this point, so you're mastering the most common and practical fills that you can use in most songs you learn. These are the most musical, most compelling, most common, just easiest to use fills, which is awesome. But I want to teach you an exercise that tells you what fill to play and when, because you have to have an idea in your head, okay, I've got this arsenal of fills, maybe I'm building up a fill vocabulary, but what good is that if you don't actually know which of those fills to use? You don't want to use a fill that sounds bad or that's not appropriate for that part of the song. Now, of course, <laughs> this, this can go so in depth because we can spend so much time talking about this, but just to give you a general idea, here's a simple exercise we're gonna do. I call this the phrasing exercise, and what it helps you do is count and feel phrases and therefore know when to play which fills. So if you've had trouble counting, like if you're playing a song and you're trying to count measures and keep track of where you're at, I don't want you to have to do that because that is not a good long-term play with, with learning songs. You don't wanna to have to be counting a bunch. This exercise is actually gonna help you get rid of the having to count because what we wanna do is feel, what does four measures feel like? What does eight measures feel like? What does 16 measures feel like? And so this is kind of a two-fold exercise where this is gonna help you with knowing what fills to play and get a feel for choosing a, the right fill for the, for the place in the song you're at. But this is also gonna help you not count so much. Here's how this works. Set your metronome to 80, 90 beats a minute. It doesn't really matter. I'm probably gonna demonstrate this at 90 beats a minute just so that we get through it a little more quickly instead of going really slow. But start as slow as you need to. And what I want you to do, so we've got the 16 bar section. Here you can see the, the way I drew this out here on the screen. So the first four bars, at the end of those first four bars, we're gonna play a small fill. So imagine I'm just gonna play a quick little light groove here. So see if you can feel when the fourth bar comes around. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. You could probably feel, okay, that felt complete. That was four bars right there. It's like the end of a phrase, the end of a little musical phrase. And in most songs, most songs are made up of these four bar building blocks. So if you can feel that passage of time, four bars, where we count to four, four times, but you don't have to count to four because you can learn to feel this. If you can do that, then you're on your way to success here. So in that fourth measure, we want to just play a small fill. I think the best small fill to do is this one. Super simple, but yet so common and it works so well. Just the and a, ga ga, boom, doom, ga, doom, doom, ba, ga, ga. So I recommend you do that small fill here in measure four. Now, our next four bars, which means when we get to the end of the next four bars, that's actually measure eight. Here we want to play a medium fill. Maybe a fill that feels a little bit bigger, but that isn't too crazy. So maybe like a ga, doom, doom, doom. So when we get to, the, to measure eight here, the end of our second four bars, we might play this. Like that. That would work. You could also do a ka 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 ka. It's just something a little bit bigger than what you did before. Now we'll do our next four bars. So on measure 12, we'll play another small fill. So whatever you play here, it needs to be a little bit smaller than what was at the end of bar eight. And then we'll do our next four bars. And when we get to the final bar here, this will be measure 16, we want to play something big. So you could go into something big that's like a full measure fill. Uh, none of the ones that we covered today were actually a full measure. But you could do a big half measure, like ka 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 do do do, or that build gun 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 ka 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 ka, depending on how fast we are. That kind of fill is a great sixteenth measure fill because, let's say this was a song, this right here would be the end of the verse, where maybe we're going into the chorus. So let's do something big. So hopefully this makes sense visually. If you're a visual person like I am, it's great to see this written out and see, okay, small fill, 
measure four, small fill measure 12, but when we're at the halfway point, the halfway point is a big deal, but medium fill there on measure eight. When we get to the end though, that's a really big deal. So big fill on measure 16. I'm just gonna play for you how this might work. Because here's the deal. The, the big issue is that we, we know these fills, we learn these fills, but we just don't know how to use them. And I don't want that to be you. I don't want you to be the drummer that's struggling to know when to play the right fill and who's all anxious about, well, I know all these fills because I learned all these fills from all these YouTube videos, but I don't know how to use them. So I wanna help you here and help you know when to use them. So there, there, this isn't black and white. There's not hard lines here. Different fills could be small fills. Different fills could be medium fills. So many fills could be big fills. So you really have to get creative with this. But first, try what I'm doing. So for my small fill, it's just gonna be the cat cat. And then for my next small fill, that same thing. Now you could do something different for your second small fill there in measure 12, but keep it very simple. Uh, and then my medium fill is just gonna be the cat tum tum tum. And then my big fill is gonna be cat 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 tum tum tum. So it feels bigger. and so on. And as you get the feel for this, you can kind of ramp things up by gradually opening the hats. And that way you are physically doing something that reminds you of where you're at. You can say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna do the small fill measures four and 12, medium fill measure eight at the halfway point, and big fill at the end. So once you know that and you feel those mile markers, then you can actually start to create anticipation by opening the hats a little bit, maybe throwing in an extra kick note. Like if you're playing just but you can start ramping things up a little bit. You know, and so on. So you don't have to do exactly what I did. I want you to get creative with this and get to where you can play these 16 bar phrases just totally making up stuff and it works. So I encourage you to think of different small fills. So a small fill could also be something like. It can be something like that. No rules here. I'm just pulling simple fills from the 12 that I showed you today. And then when you get to that final fill, you can do something really big. You can start making things up, whatever you wanna do. The point is learn to feel the phrases so that as you're playing, you don't have to think, oh no, where am I? Has it been eight bars? No, you feel that. And that's, that's, the, way, that's the way most music is. It, it, it's natural and it makes sense. And for some reason, we naturally feel a sense of completion at four bars in a sense of like really completion at eight bars. And if it's twice as long at 16, it's like, whoo, there we just wrapped up a really big section. It's so funny how we can internally feel those things. And if you can teach yourself to really hear that and recognize that, that's gonna help you so much because this direct exercise, you could throw what I just played on top of various songs and it's gonna work. Yes, certain songs are different and there are weird songs out there that aren't built to four bar phrases, but you know, 90 something percent of pop songs are made of these four, eight, 16 bar phrases. And so this works. And so practice doing this to a favorite song, practice playing the chorus, or just listen to some favorite songs and notice how the drummer's probably gonna play something small measure four, or maybe nothing measure four. And then there might be a fill or there might be a cymbal crash there at the end of measure eight. Sometimes a fill is as simple as a cymbal crash. And then when you get to the end of measure 16, maybe that's where the actual fill is. So maybe everything's a little more subdued where there's no fill on measure four or 12 but there's a cymbal crash at the end of measure eight. Or maybe there are a lot of fills, and so maybe it's a kind of big fill on measure four and measure 12. So a really big fill measure eight, and then something massive and loud and dramatic at the end of measure 16. So in review, practice your alternating 16ths into your eights, totally foundational. It's gonna help you with most fills you ever play. And then practice these 12 beginner fills, grab the guide, because that's gonna give you a whole bunch more, plus recordings, short descriptions of how to use these. And then practice this exercise that helps you feel feel where you're at within a song so that you know the right kind of fill to play. I really hope this lesson helps you out a bunch. And hey, as we wrap up, question for you, what do you need to work on? I always ask you this, and it's because I want you to take action. I want you to think through, all right, 
what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses? Maybe I'm already pretty good at fill transitions. Maybe I don't need to worry about that first thing, the pad exercise. Or maybe my fills are sloppy, so maybe I need to spend a lot of time on that number one thing every drummer should practice, doing the 16ths and the 8ths. But I want you thinking about that. Be thinking critically and analyzing yourself and going, okay, what am I good at? What am I not good at? Be honest and also be easy on yourself. You know, if you're like, man, everything's a mess. I'm just now starting. If it feels like chaos. But what I want you to do in that case is just practice the 16ths into the 8ths. So that first step, and then just spend, spend time on a couple of the very first basic fills. You don't have to try all 12 or all 25. Actually, there's more than 25 in the guide, spoiler alert. But just practice a few. Keep things simple. Don't let yourself be overwhelmed. So I want you to self-analyze, record yourself, video yourself, be your own teacher. That's how you learn really well online, when you can take that initiative and really be your own teacher and, and see what your strengths and your weaknesses are. Tell me that in the comments. What do you need to work on? Let's encourage each other. Let's try to motivate each other. Let's get some good discussion going. All right, I've really enjoyed today. This has been a lot of fun. I love talking about fills. I think we all love fills because fills are cool. Fills are fun. And the best drummers play fills really well. So it's a skill that we need to get really good at even as a beginner. I hope this lesson has been helpful. I hope it's been super valuable. Be sure to grab that guide. As always, fellow non-glamorous drummer, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will see you on the next lesson. Stay non-glamorous and know that no matter what, no matter whatever level you're at, you can do this.